Alan Tiemann is on the board of the U.S. Grains Council, a nonprofit organization developing export markets for American grain products. Along with us is Mike Callahan. He directs the council's Asia operations and travels the world developing relationships with overseas grain customers. On this trip, he gets an earful on corn prices at each stop. Uh, now, to get, to get some, uh, this is sure. important. Don't, don't... Evidence of U.S. farmers' efforts can be found at Washa. Located on the farm is a U.S. Grains Council training facility. On any given day, you'll find dairy farmers from across China attending classes on Western-style dairy management. And uh, we're very excited to see the development of the dairy industry here in China. So how does helping dairy farmers in China help U.S. farmers like Alan Tiemann? To find out, we visit Li Yan Dairy Farm. Smaller than Hua Sha, with about 500 head of cattle, its owner is using management techniques learned from Hua Sha. Li Wan Ching is the farm's owner. Do you feel like there's enough demand for milk uh, and will be enough demand for milk in China to support uh, more operations like yours? You say that uh, the uh, demand for good quality milk uh, is, will be increasing uh, because most of the milk produced in China has very poor quality. Li Wanqing plans to grow his dairy farm, tripling the number of cows. But before he can do that, there are some improvements that still need to be made. He's getting help from Walter Chen, a dairy consultant from Washa Farm. As you can see that the cows are laying on a brick floor and they're not very comfortable, they're very dirty. And nutrition also is one thing. I was talking to the manager earlier about the fee. The expansion at Liyan is happening at dairy farms all across China. And more cows mean more feed, and that requires more grains. Where do U.S. grains fit into this uh, uh, proposition, importing of, of U.S. grains for feed? Is that going to be a, you think that's going to be a market there as this uh, expands? I think as the industry expands and the demand for uh, feed grain increases, uh, certainly there's uh, U.S. grain. Uh, have a potential market here in China. Of course, China is big and, and the government trying to encourage farmers to grow you know, their own grain and stuff like that, but it's probably uh, not enough. China is the world's second largest corn producing country after the United States. The U.S. grows about 40% of the world's corn, China just over 20%. China's willingness to import corn has been limited by the government's interest in keeping up the price for its own farmers. But the hope is that the skyrocketing population and economy will force this country to look outside its borders for feed grains like corn. We're going to continue to see the need for exports out of the United States to all these developing countries because uh, their, their economies are growing. And with a growing economy comes growing demands. From energy to the environment, milking parlors and plastics from corn, it's a complicated picture of a world growing more connected. And in the middle of it, a Nebraska farm family, gaining more confidence in the role of their fellow farmers in feeding the world. It's, it's obvious that, that global demand is gonna be there and uh, it's, it's gonna grow. 